So I gotta tell you guys, it's interesting. All season on the jump, we've debated the real meaning of what is an MVP. Is it the player who just puts up the best numbers? Is it the guy whose team would crash and burn the hardest if you took him off of it? How many games can you miss and still be the MVP? Kevin Durant was knocked out of this season's MVP race when he got hurt, but he'll likely be named Finals MVP, and, and he should. He has just been exceptional. And seeing him in full bloom in this series, man, he deserves the hardware. But as we move forward now, next, and start talking about Dynasty and whether this Warriors team is going to go down as one of the best ever, well, there's a different player we also need to consider. Last July, Steph Curry got on a plane, flew all the way across the country, and asked someone else to, in essence, come displace him. Golden State was unquestionably Steph's team, and yet he didn't just play ball on recruiting Kevin Durant. He was the key to recruiting Kevin Durant. It has been well documented. Durant was not interested in another push-pull situation like he had with Russell Westbrook. If Steph had shown anything except unbridled enthusiasm, KD doesn't sign, and this would be a very different era in the NBA. So how come Steph did it? You're talking about a guy who had just won two straight MVPs, the darling of the league. I can't think of another star with those kinds of credentials who would have done what Steph did. I mean, come on, can you see Kobe doing that? <laughs> Michael Jordan? I sat down with Steph yesterday and I asked him how it felt now. Now that he's seen it play out, where he is winning easier, there's no doubt about it, but with less of a spotlight. You had to know that there was at least a risk you would be ceding some of the recognition to him. How does it feel now that it's actually happened? I mean, uh, I'm, I'm happy, man. It's been here eight years. I've seen the depths of Warrior basketball. I've seen you know the rise and enjoy the whole process. I've seen us you know become a championship caliber and a championship winning team. And now we're in a position to do it again. So um, to help orchestrate that, and to be in a position where a guy like Katie can see himself gelling with our, our team, with myself on the floor, you know, together, it, it's, it's a special feeling. It's interesting to watch, though, because as your coach says, you're not a humble guy. He said, anyone who shimmies down the court the way Steph Curry <laughs> shimmies down the court, don't let him fool you. He is not the humble superstar. So watching someone who legitimately feels that way welcome another superstar to his team and watch him in some way take he took the final shot in game three the dagger that would have been you a couple years ago how are you able to have both did you see my celebration when it happened like that that was a, a, a genuine That's feeling I mean. of, of uh i know i'm not bigger than anybody else in our team and I, this is a, this is something that we all have to do together it's not just talk it's literally how i approach every single night you know, it's funny, we're quick to list the things that we think make you the most valuable. There's the impact you have on a game, the buckets you score, the leadership in the locker room. We don't really put sacrifice at the top of those lists, but make no mistake, without Steph Curry's sacrifice, without him legitimately being okay with, say, watching KD take the dagger shot the other night instead of him, the Warriors would not be poised on the brink of a dynasty here. So yes, as we have seen this week, Kevin Durant was the ingredient that has put Golden State over the edge. But as usual, Steph Curry, he was the chef.